All right, so I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, you are most likely a beginner. I guarantee you that if you just watch this entire video through, this will help you out tremendously because this is everything that I wish I would have known when I first started fishing, when my dad and I first started fishing. This would have saved us a ton of time and a ton of effort, a ton of pain from skunking all the time. So I guarantee you this will help you out a lot if you are a beginner. And even if you're intermediate, this could probably help you fish new bodies of water as well. This is basically everything I wish I would have known when I first started fishing. I have this video split up into sections so you guys can always just come back to whenever you guys need to. And other than that, let's just get into it. All right, so part number one is where are you fishing? Are you fishing in a pond? Are you fishing in a river? Are you fishing in a lake? Are you fishing in a stream? Is your body of water connected to the ocean? Is it closed off like a pond? And all this stuff really does matter because it determines what fish you are after. Because most likely if your body of water is connected to the ocean, then most likely you'll be having some fish coming in from the ocean into your rivers or into your streams or into your creeks. Or are you fishing in a pond where it's closed off, where you don't have any fish migrating in there, but you're having fish stocked in there, right? So figure out what are you fishing, where are you fishing, pond, river, lake, stream, ocean, river. I think I already said that. But yeah, so figure out first where you're fishing. That is very important. Part number two, what fish are you after in that body of water that you are fishing? So as you're doing research on where you're fishing at, you'll come across what fish are you fishing for, and you'll see what fish are in that body of water. And from those fish that you see in your body of water, pick out which one you want to fish. I can say though, some fish are a lot harder to catch than others. Like in my body of water where I fish, I fish in the rivers. So some fish are harder to catch than others. So like a sturgeon would be harder to catch than a bluegill. Or like in my opinion, a bass is a lot easier to catch than a salmon, you know? Some fishes are a lot more beginner friendly and some fishes aren't so beginner friendly so uh, pick a fish that is more beginner friendly and how do you do that well you can go on youtube and search up your body water and see if people are fishing there and most likely someone has posted a video there at least and you'll see what the fish are catching and what they're using and you'll see on like how well are they catching are they just catching one fish only or are they catching a whole bunch of fish are they just slaying them so take that into mind and understand and see like oh this fish isn't too hard to catch. Maybe they can do it, I can do it. So figure that out. See what fish is more beginner friendly and what fish is a lot harder. Now I'm not saying that if you're a beginner or you go, you can't catch uh, a fish that is super hard. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying, you know, it is a lot, it might be a lot harder, but if you listen to these other tips that I'm about to give you, it'll definitely improve your chances of catching even that harder fish and it'll make it way more easier to catch that easier fish. So yeah, use YouTube and use, um, you know, the internet to your advantage and and to see that fish and to do more research on that fish that you are after. Okay, so number three. Now probably the most important, but the most boring out of all of these regulations. Now every body of water that I know has regulations. It's very important to know these regulations so you just don't go out blindly and get fined for it <laughs> and that would not be good. So you, you gotta know the regulations in your state, in your area, in your body of water. So, like every state has their own regulations and in every area is their own regulations and even in the certain body of water, that certain pond, that certain area of the river or that certain part of the creek or ocean is going to have different regulations. So, so it's very important to know your regulations. Like in some ponds that I know, you have to go barbless. You can't have no trouble hooks or like certain parts of the river. You can't have any barbed hooks or sometimes you can't even fish for a certain fish at a certain time of the year. So yeah, regulations are very important. Probably, you know, the most boring, but very important. It might take some time to figure out you're doing the regulations, but it'll be well worth it because you do not want to be out there and get fined for like doing something that you shouldn't have been doing, but you didn't know. And take some time out and learn the regulations a bit. All right, so number four is seasons. Now, what I mean by seasons is like uh, the seasonal patterns of these fish. So for example, during the springtime, the bass start to spawn, right? And for example, on my body of water, the striped bass come into the rivers to spawn as well during the springtime. And then during the summertime, the American shad come into the river. During the fall time, king salmon come into the rivers. And then during the winter time, the sturgeon come into the rivers and it kind of overlaps into the springtime, which again starts with stripers. So it's just kind of like that constant season of fish coming, moving, of coming in and out, right? So what you don't want to be doing and what we used to do is we didn't know any better. So we didn't really know. Like we would fish for stripers during the fall time 
when in reality we should have been fishing for salmon instead of fishing for stripers when the stripers are already long gone and the salmon are in you know so we didn't really know that so it's important to know your seasons or it's important to know what fish are in during each season so how do you figure out what fish are in in each season well number one and probably the best way to do it is just to ask uh, other fishermen. If you know a fisherman who already fishes that body of water, even better because they know. If you don't, just ask the fisherman or fisherwoman who's already fishing there. Most likely they're really nice and they'll give you info on it. Or you can just go out there and just experience and just, you know, get out there and just keep learning until you figure it out. But probably the easiest way that, uh, you know, to figure it out is just to ask other fishermen and fisherwomen. Um, but even in ponds, you'll have seasonal patterns and seasonal fish. Like at least here where I'm at, the trout will be stocked during the winter time, and then all the way up to early spring or like late spring, and then during the summertime, the stock catfish in the lakes and ponds during the summertime. So even in ponds, you'll have your own seasonal patterns and fish. So it's very important to know your seasonal patterns and fish because if you don't, you might just be wasting your time fishing for the wrong fish at the wrong time. So yeah. Very important to know your seasons. Don't do what we did. We were kind of just like wasting time fishing for the wrong fish. Um, so yeah, know your patterns, know your seasonal patterns and stuff. And that's when regulations also come in because sometimes the regulations will tell you you're only allowed to fish during this part of the year for this certain fish. And I'll tell you that. So then you're like, oh, I don't need to waste my time fishing for this fish on a different part of the year, which is number one, it's illegal anyways. And number two is like, oh, they're most likely it's open because that means there's they're there and they're present and to be caught. So, you know, it'll increase your chances because you know that, look, they're open. That means most likely they're in the most abundant numbers of fish during that time. And it's your best time to catch them. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so that's basically seasons. Now, when it comes to what to use for that fish you're going after, it should really tell you when you're, when you're doing your research on going on YouTube and searching up like and researching the fish that you're trying to catch most of the time they will tell you like the pound line and what type of rod you should use and what type of reel you should use i'm telling you that from experience if you're just fishing for like trout bass stripers even salmon um you can really just get away with a walmart rod from walmart um and i'm pretty sure you're a beginner so you don't want to spend too much I understand that so you just go to walmart and you pick up any rod and reel combo there honestly i'll leave some Rod and reel suggestions that I've gotten from Walmart and are actually very, very good. And I've caught so many fish in them. Like one of them, I think it's called the Granite Outdoors Spinning Reel. And I think it's like only like 15 to 25 bucks. And I'm telling you, I've caught so many stripers on that reel and I've beat that reel down so bad. But it worked for me. And I, it lasted like almost three years before I got another reel. And it was just as good as the reels that I have today. So that's one I remember I got in Walmart. It's called like Granite Outdoors. So if I can find a link, I'll leave it. In the description below, I'll leave some good like uh, beginner rods when you're re doing your research on your fish. They should already tell you like, oh, you need this pound test, you need this type rod, you need this type reel. And go into like Walmart or go into um, an outdoor store and just trying to see like find one that can match your budget but matches that description of the rod or reel you need for that certain fish. If you get what I'm saying. So if you need any advice, just leave some comments down below i'll try to help you but just know that the bigger the fish you're going for the more heavier you're probably going to need to but the smaller the fish the lighter you need to go to but i'm gonna be honest we've caught king salmon up to like 15 pounds on 10 pound line on ultra light rods so you don't really need it but it's like it's nice to have the right tools for the right job it get the job done faster but it's like if you have a drill or a screwdriver to screw in that screw you can still do it with a screwdriver but it'll be a lot easier to do with the drill if you get what I'm saying. It's kind of like that. So yeah, you still get it done. It's good to have the right gear for the right job. When it comes to lures and like bait, it's going to be like split into two categories. You, as far as I know, there's really only dead bait or live bait where you actually use the real thing and put on a hook. It's like a, like you using an, a worm, an earthworm on your hook for the, for the fish. Or you use something which is called artificial lures which is, it imitates that real thing but isn't actually the real thing and it just looks like the real thing so that would be like a senko or basically anything that mimics the real thing and if you are using the real thing then that's bait or are you and or you're using imitation of the real thing that's most likely 
lure. And whether you're using lure or bait, that just really depends on the fish you're after. Like if you're fishing for sturgeon or carp or catfish, most likely you're going to be using bait. Or like sometimes you'll be fishing for striper that will bite bait or lure. And you just have to experiment which one would be better. Same thing with trout. Sometimes they'll bite a power bait, but sometimes they might want like a spoon or a, uh, a rooster tail or some type of spinner, you know. Uh, most of the time when you're doing the research on the fish you are researching on, they'll tell you like, oh, what is best to use for that fish. Like you can even search up on Google what to use for whatever fish you're fishing for. What to use for striped bass. And the It'll pop up and yeah it'll pop up on google and you can figure out what is good for your area okay so for the next tip is just talk to other fishermen who fish your body water as well most of the time they're really nice and are, are going to help you especially if you're a beginner but um even ask your family ask your friends see if they know how to fish so they can just show you the ropes as well um but also use youtube there's a lot of helpful channels out there on fishing like tactical bassin is a very very good one if you're starting off bass fishing informative fishermen uh, very good instructional channel for almost all species. Use YouTube and use online resources to your advantage as well. There's a lot of helpful tips and tricks out there on the internet. And also ask just the people around you and the people who fish in your body of water and ask them for tips and advice as well. The best way to gain knowledge out there and get better at fishing is honestly, yes, you can learn from other people, but you need to apply that knowledge to when you're fishing because knowledge without action is pretty much useless so get advice from other people and from the internet but make sure when you go fishing apply that advice when you're fishing through experience you'll get better and better at fishing because as you fish more the more experience you gain the better you get and you get even better by listening to other people and applying their advice to your fishing and honestly over time you just get better and better and better and better by being out there by fishing you'll get better and better each time it's just experience but but yeah, as you keep going out there and you keep getting experience, you're going to get skunked a few times. You're going to have some good days. You're going to have some bad days. But it's important to have those bad days so you can learn from them. Be like, okay, what did I do wrong this time? Maybe I, should have, I shouldn't have done this and maybe I should have done that. And I'll apply that next time to my next fishing trip. Or even when you have good days, you got to be like, oh, I did this right. So maybe I'll do this again the next time I go out. Right. So this kind of brings us to our eighth point is just to be realistic, because fishing ain't easy at all. Um, you have to understand that, you know, you're going to have bad days. You got to have you're going to have good days. You have bad days. But you have to know the bad in order to appreciate the good days. Just be realistic and be like, not every time you're going to go out. Not every time you're going to catch fish. Fishing ain't easy. You got to be patient. It, it's what makes fishing really fun, though. So yeah, as you gain more experience, you'll just get better and better. But remember to be realistic and just follow these steps and just keep at it and just enjoy the journey. Thanks guys for watching. Peace out.